The future's coming fast, and artificial intelligence is an important component, but it's especially potent when it's combined with robots. And let's start by talking about how I think fireworks have now been completely replaced by drone, like, fireworks show? Drone images in the sky? Uh, like, moving stars? I don't even know how you describe it, but look at this. Sure, a swarm of drones seems really scary, but what if they're just a gigantic skeleton that's gonna stomp on you? Well, I mean, they're still scary, but like, kinda cool as they're scary. Especially when it's just a Halloween show in Dubai. How about this one over the Sydney Opera House? This is like a whale going into the sky and becoming the planets, the solar system, one by one showing them off, like, that's crazy. And I guess the drones are just programmed to go black when they reposition, that's how they can make it so it just like pops. Now, if you've seen the sphere in Las Vegas, like during the F1 this week, like that's pretty impressive, right? But that's LEDs that are grounded to something, a big structure. But in New York with a lighted drone show, they could actually make an entire Pac-Man like video game over the water that's just floating and flying there. Gone are the days of the Goodyear blimp or those like airplanes that had signs on them, Skywriters or, or Skywriting, you know, where you would like make fake clouds basically that spelled out some kind of an advertisement. Now the future is here. How about a full-on dragon just flying right above your city? How cool is that? But fortunately, I'm not done with all the innovative ways that people are using drones this Halloween. Have you seen this ghost ghoul prank thing, like chasing after people? Now, I already slightly have a, a fear of like a drone chasing me down the, the road or something, so this like really hit home to me. The last thing I want is some scary looking floating goblin thing that I can't explain or even think about why it's just like flying after me on the fly like that. But I gotta say, it's really innovative, very interesting. Oh, but let's go back to more traditional like humanoid robotics. Xiaomi has debuted their humanoid robot and I hate, I mean, obviously robotics that can walk are absolutely insane and like five years ago this would be like so amazing, but I'm gonna kind of give this one a meh on, at this point in time just because of all the crazy things I saw this year. I mean, it might be the sweetest presentation I've ever seen. Like I've never seen a robot like give a rose before. This flower is for you, he says. Thank you so much. You have a high EQ, a high emotional intelligence, a high emotional quotient. Thank you for the rose. And now that you've given your sweet EQ move, why don't you show them your kung fu? Everybody loves your kung fu moves. Why don't we take a selfie together? And to do it, we'll use our new Xiaomi phone. Oh, a foldable? Yeah, very innovative. What can I say? Very innovative. But but just being real, like we just saw all that cool Disney stuff with like the character pipeline and those robots are so realistic and animated. And then with the Tesla Optimus robot, which does kind of move a little funky like this one, it actually just seems like it has better dexterity and kind of a cooler look and has made a little bit more progress. Plus I know they're trying to like build that one in a way that it's like truly for scale. So you can build some kind of like an Optimus humanoid Tesla robot gigafactory type thing and like pump out like hundreds of thousands of them. And if it is just a one-off and you're just trying to like wow people on YouTube, like that's not even close to what Boston Dynamics is able to do. I mean, that's like straight parkour stuff we've seen coming out of them. But I mean, talk about walking. Like this robot is balancing, it is throwing, it is twisting, it is jumping, it is crazy. But I don't want to knock on it because certainly Something with an actuator can be incredibly bad one day and with a software update look totally different. So I have no idea how much faster these things are gonna come. It's another player in the space, maybe trying to carve their own path and they might very well jump ahead. Now for the video that I actually played the most when preparing to film today was this one. Like when like a waiter is holding glasses and can like do that with one hand, but to see a robot with the dexterity to actually kind of move the platform in just such a way that something like a ping pong ball, which seems so easy to like get out of control, can stay in such a natural way, but in balance, like, and to maneuver it, just, I was like, this is crazy. Like, I don't know if they did it all at the simulation and then just like put it in here, or if it somehow like got a camera above it that's reacting, but I just had to share this. Like, you have to know that robots in some capacity are able to, to have this kind of precision and balance. Now if you saw my other video where I was talking about like throwing robots and they could like take the water bottles and like chuck them way up high and they would spin and just like balance perfect. Like something about that kind of stuff really still kind of just really impresses me. In a very Vegas move, there is now a slot machine that can follow you around the casino. So you know, go to dinner and it just like sits there and waits for you at the end of the table. 
go to your bedroom. It just like stays outside the hotel room door so that like when you open it in the morning, it's like, hey, in case you want to play some slots, like I'm right here. Now here we have something that I never even thought I'd be really impressed with, but I totally am. These are movable medians. They're guides to change the way a road is like organized. And the second I saw it, I was like, you know what? The way we drop cones to like move people into lanes is really terrible. I mean, if you think about it, there has to be somebody like usually like some guy sitting in the back of the truck, like dropping cones in just such a way that you can kind of like merge people into a different lane. You know, and it gets the job done, but it's kind of archaic when you think about it. It doesn't really give some people a lot of time to get over. The wind can blow them out of place. And sometimes you forget and you don't want to like put the effort into like taking them up at night because the next day you're going to be working on the road again. So they often sit around way longer than they should. But you know, something like this, it's just like, okay, merge people into the other lane when you're actually working on the road, like wait until the truck is there, ready to like lay some asphalt or whatever, then move people over. And then when you're done, put that back so that they can actually use the lane again. It just, just makes sense. It's just a smart city thing that we should just do. Now, if you're looking for a humanoid robot to actually be a pilot in your personal aircraft, well, I've got some good news for you. This is PyBot, the pilot. Imagine a pilot that never gets tired, that pilots better than a human pilot. Well, maybe that's what we're on the verge of with this thing. I mean, it says PyBot can respond to emergency situations much faster than a human pilot. I mean, imagine you actually own an airline or an airplane, like, sure would be nice. These things don't get tired, they could fly around the clock. Humans are limited to two eyes. You can put, you know, cameras all over the airplane that these robots can tap into. I feel like the actuators aren't there to like actually move as fast as a human yet, but you know that's right around the corner. You can definitely imagine that they could just grab gears and like move steering wheels and press buttons at like superhuman speeds in the future. And according to this article, the robot's memory is so large that it can memorize all navigation charts at the same time in a way no human ever could, so that's a plus. Now the main downside to me is that those eyes look like really bug-eyed and that kind of freaks me out and I don't think that's gonna make people comfortable. So. Now if you've been concerned about how long it will be until robotic AI powered hands can actually pick up a Pringles chip without breaking it, deep reinforcement learning is back to solve another problem and that is not breaking Pringles chips. Gosh, this sounds so good right now, I must be hungry. But this by touch system System is doing all sorts of extremely delicate tasks. And the company imagines maybe in the future this robot can graduate to doing fruit picking or even moving around people in hospital rooms with a nice delicate touch. And yeah, talking about super delicate and precise things, check out this robot that helps surgeons. No more shaky hands, no more human issues that can't be smoothed out with a machine, right? Like this kind of makes sense to me. Like this is still a human getting in there and making something very tiny, very sophisticated, but with actual eye magnification through the robot with smoothing systems so that like when they're trying to do something that it actually does what it should without like being shaky or missing or making a mistake. And on top of that, there could be safeguards so that if you went to like cut something and it wasn't supposed to be punctured, AI could learn not to let you do that, which would be important if you're doing surgery inside of a body or you navigate and a human like misunderstands something it if it's not sure, it might say, hey, just double checking, are you sure you wanna make this cut because I've got information that says this might be dangerous and that could very well save someone's life. And of course, we're not gonna end the video without looking at a $3 million mech warrior. This might be a great use of your money if you have that much sitting around because it can morph from a vehicle to a straight up robot mech warrior thing. 15 feet tall, 3.5 tons, this thing is awesome. And the nice thing is the creators aren't trying to make it so it's useful in any way. They actually do state that. They're like, I'm just trying to make something that would be really cool. And that's nice. Every other mech warrior has kind of been like, I'm here in case there's an earthquake or I can help like soldiers or something. But these guys were just like, nah, let's just, let's just make something cool. And when you do that, you get this. Like, how cool is that? I mean, just imagine rolling up to a party like, just put that thing in some superhero pose and then just stand up tall, everyone would be checking it out. Dude, some movie star, some DJ or something comes rolling up in that. It's actually the first time I've really wanted to be a movie star just so I can get invited to like a red carpet event and show up in this thing. I wouldn't even care if the movie bombed and I made no money and was never in a movie again. I'd still be like, dude, I, I rolled up in that thing, you saw it. This guy taking video over in the corner, like, he looks so small. So if you're enjoying that Mech Warrior spirit we were in together, smash that subscribe button, help me get to 8,000 subs. Thank you.